Welcome to the Car Pro Insider Podcast, episode 28, where in this episode, we're going to go through the Car Pro's three step guide to crafting a killer elevator pitch. Now, let's do it. Real quick, before we get into the show, I want to make an apology. During this episode, this is episode 28, as I just said, but during this episode, I keep calling it number 27. I do apologize for that, but for all the detailed notes and examples, you'll want to get them at Robert, W-I-E-S-M-A-N dot com slash 28. Sorry about that. Hey, what's up? I'm Robert Wiseman, and I have helped car sales professionals from around the world sell more cars by building their personal brands, attracting high-quality car buyers, and becoming the go-to car guy or gal in their marketplace. So what does it take to become the car sales professional that people are lining up to do business with? This is the Car Pro Insider. Hey, welcome to the Car Pro Insider Podcast. As you heard, this is episode 27, and I am your right-hand man and partner on this journey, Robert Wiseman, and this is the Car Sales Podcast for automotive professionals who are looking for proven strategies, outside the box, creative ideas, and the latest greatest and coolest resources to help them level up and crush it in automotive sales. I appreciate you being here first time or you know all the time. I got mad love for you. If you haven't peeped all the other episodes, do so wherever you get podcasts or at Robert Wiseman, W-I-E-S-M-A-N dot com. Bunch of information there that if you haven't been there, definitely should check it out. Car pros seem to love it. Um, You know, you can get all the previous episodes there and a bunch of different other content that you will find valuable. Uh, Feel free to leave me a review on iTunes or wherever you get podcasts. I see all of them and I definitely appreciate that love. All right, so let's jump into the content here. This is episode 27 and today we're going to talk about crafting your killer elevator pitch. So what an elevator pitch or sometimes you'll hear called an elevator speech either or what it is, it's just like a short and sweet and to the point brief speech that's designed to convey what you do and generate interest in it, right? You know, the way that you would use this is a lot of times not necessarily for people that you see in the dealership. I'm sure maybe you could. It could go across, you know, depending what you'll see here moving forward. But it's stuff that like at other outside the dealership uh networking events or just out at the mall or at a a festival at a party out at night and people you know people chopping up talking about what they do I mean do you want to say oh hey I sell cars right do you want to say that I sell cars or would you want to say something like oh I help car shoppers who hate car shopping and spending all day in a dealership by offering them a streamlined pressure free and 100% transparent in store experience which helps make buying a new car an enjoyable fast and painless experience that my customers love boom what would which one would you rather say well in this episode I'm going to show you how to say the latter Because that's the one I do believe anybody wants to be saying that you should be saying as opposed to, oh, hey, I just sell cars or I'm a car salesman. Oh, I sell I sell Fords. I sell Chevys, you know, whatever. Right. We're going to show you how you craft a a brief, quick to the point and sexy elevator pitch that you can deliver to to possible prospects and people at networking events and out there in the real world that you connect with so you don't sound like every other car salesperson out there you know what i'm saying let's jump into it all right so let's jump in and i'm going to show you step by step how you can create uh your elevator pitch your elevator speech whatever you want to call it uh like the one example i gave uh in the little uh intro there right So it's going to be three steps, and then I'm going to go into about three more tips to help and for you to think about while you're crafting this. All right, boom. So what we do is we started with the pain, right? You want to start with a pain of of the of the the customers that you're trying to attract, who you're trying to work with. Now this one here, the example I gave you is the pain is you know car shoppers who hate 
you know, car shopping and spending all day in the dealership, basically. Now, that could be also, it could be uh, credit challenged, customers, busy, um, executives, um, whatever, you know, small construction owners, if you're looking for truck buyers, things like that, right? So this one, I'm just going to kind of get a little bit, you know, example that a lot of people can probably relate with. And then you can go in and fill in whichever and change it up to to pertain to you, right? <clears throat> So this was the pain was to help car shoppers who hate car shopping that like they're really fed up and just hate and dread and are stressed out about spending all day in a dealership. All right. That's the first step. Document that the problem, the pain that that your customers have. Number two is going to be the solution, the solution, how I ease that pain. And that is by a streamlined, pressure free and 100 percent transparent in store experience right so your solution would be pertain to whatever pain that you're uh that you're looking to solve whatever problem you're looking to solve you then write down the solution as number two and again if yours was uh credit challenge customers is the pain the solution could be um getting them in on the road in the car that meets their needs at an affordable price <clears throat> And then we move to after the solution is number three is the benefits of the solution. You want to put in there like how what how are they going to benefit from the solution that you're providing for their pain? Right. What's the end result going to be? And mine is it makes buying a new car an enjoyable, fast and painless experience that my customers love. Right. OK, that is the benefit of the solution, the streamlined, pressure free and 100 percent transparent in store experience. Right. The the solution, what that does is it makes buying a new car an enjoyable, fast and painless experience that my customers love. If the solution was like we said, subprime, um, it would the the benefit of that would be then you, you know having a car that meets your needs that you like and an affordable payment with an interest rate that is not you know gouging you whatever you know i would definitely polish that copy up a tad but you get it so what that what all that did so then i just put it together the pain the solution the benefits of your solution and i just put it together and that's where i got helping car shoppers who hate car shopping and spending all day in a dealership by offering a streamlined pressure-free and 100 percent transparent in-store experience which which makes buying a new car an enjoyable, fast, and painless experience that my customers all love. Boom. How long that take? Like 15, 20 seconds to, to, to recite, right? And it's very easy. It sounds good. I mean, I think it sounds good. I could be a little bit, you know, bias, but I think it sounds pretty good. And I just wrote that, you know, earlier today when I did this example, just to show how easy it can be done. So let me just run through that again. So the pain, the problem, what's the problem that you're going to like rub salt in and, you know, what's the wound you're going to be rubbing salt and rubbing some lemon, rubbing alcohol in that you're going to like make them know that th that that problem exists, right? So mine is helping car shoppers. This one, the pain was helping car shoppers who hate car shopping and spending all day in a dealership. Then number two, the solution. How do we solve that pain? How do we ease that? What's our what's our pill that we're providing? And we're providing a streamlined, pressure-free, and 100% transparent in-store experience, which is going to help car shoppers who hate car shopping and spending all day in a dealership, which is their pain. The benefits of that solution, the benefits of my solution that I just proposed, is it's going to make buying a new car an enjoyable, fast, and painless experience that your cause that they will love the customers will love boom so i'm going to give it to you one more time it's helping car shoppers who hate car shopping and spending all day in a dealership by offering a streamlined pressure free and 100 percent transparent in-store experience which makes buying a new car an enjoyable fast and painless experience that my customers all love boom see how easy that is and that's just going through listing your pain the solution to that pain the benefit of your solution to that pain those are the three for crafting your 
uh, elevator pitch, a good, a killer, a creative one that's it. when people ask you what you do, you're not going to sound like everybody else. And if you know me, that's the name of the game. Being different is being different. Only all you got to do to be different is just be different. And people remember different people do business. People like different. It sticks out right? It's memorable. Like I said, so that's the, the steps to crafting it. Let me give you three quick tips when, while crafting it to think about, to ponder on, and then we're going to bounce on out of here, right? And but don't forget, don't worry if you can't take notes, if I'm jumbling around a little bit or confusing you because sometimes this kid tends to do that because so you know I'm excited, passionate about this game. But all the, the notes and the details, and you'll be able to, to go through this, see it in writing at robertwiseman.com slash 27. That's W-I-E-S-M-A-N dot com slash 27. You can find this detailed and laid out there for you, too. So let's jump into these three tips. I'm going to make them real quick. One is keep it as short as possible. Uh, the more that I kept rereading that one, I think I could possibly take a couple words out of it if I spent some more time editing it. And I'll do that and I'll post that onto the blog at robertwiseman.com slash 27 so you can see it. I'm going to make it even better. But you want to keep it as short as possible because that's what's memorable. I mean, we're, that's the world we're living in. People are just like bombarded with stuff from everywhere, from their phones, talking with people, kids, just, you know, TVs, music. I mean, everywhere you go, there's messaging. People are bombarded. So the shorter it is and the easy, and the compelling and the easier it is to consume, the better it's going to be. So keep it short and sweet as possible. Go back and edit it a few times even after you put it all together. Get a second pair of eyes on it or or fall back off of it till till the next day relook at it and see if you can craft it and make it better and shorter two is use clear words you know no jargon you know what i mean use words that are concise and clear you know that, that they have clarity there's no misconception and don't use terms that we use you know i, I can't even come up with like uh jargon went refused to like when it comes to credit or be you know credit scores and and things like that whether it be good or bad credit just you know stay away from all jargon and the third is practice 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 right you need to get in there and practice reciting this speech once you have it down you need it needs to come off the tongue just like like it's nothing right detailed fast um, putting emphasis on the right words using the right tone at right at, at the right places and I do that a lot by a recording myself doing it especially through video right because a lot of times it's going to be in person so not only how it sounds what not, not only what you're saying and how it sounds is important but how you look delivering it and what you're doing while delivering it is going to be just as important. So use video, use mirrors and just practice, 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 because this thing has got to be able to spit out like it's breathing and make it natural and real. So real quick, those three tips, keep it short and simple, use clear words, no jargon and practice, practice, practice. All right, guys, that's it for episode 27 of the Car Pro Insider podcast. I hope that you know, enlightened you a little bit. Hope you got something, a little something, something out of that. Uh, make sure to, uh, you know, look me up wherever you like podcasts, subscribe, leave a review if you haven't, and then get all the details of this episode and all the others, robertwiseman.com slash 27. All right. And I'll see you next week. Stay at it.